Hello friends, today I would like to take you through a tour of my 5-speed 2000 BMW Z3 2.3. After owning two E36s, multiple Mercedes, and an E38, I decided to purchase this two-seat ride. Each of the vehicles I own has a purpose, or rather a unique experience that they offer, and for this one it is the 5-speed top-down screaming inline 6 that fills some of the checkboxes on my list. I have owned it now for 13 months and have put several thousand miles on its E36 slash E30 chassis and so far it has been a joy to own and drive. Please consider subscribing for more German car content in the future. I appreciate it. Thank you. After I purchased it for $2,200, I removed the unsightly headlight film that had been installed on it and then completed a full polish to its bright red paintwork. It was originally hell rot red before a previous owner looks like they had it painted at Mako to a brighter red color. I then painfully installed a new convertible top that took several hours as the old one was ripped and after reconnecting to the factory hydraulic motor linkages and some fuses and wiring, the power top worked. I also keep this Allen wrench in my glove box just in case the motor ever fails so I can easily go back to using the top manually if I need to. I then swapped on my $120 salvage yard set that I picked up years ago of real BBS wheels that I did have installed on my old E36. Then began the interior improvements, installing lower seat covers, replacing the ripped off door handles with red strap, installing a double dent Android head unit and replacing the speakers. I then fabricated a subwoofer enclosure for the biggest sub that I could fit between the two seats, an 8-inch solo barrack after having realized that a sub in the trunk is almost useless in these E3s as there are solid sheets of metal that block the trunk off and when the top is down it adds to further trunk noise isolation. To power it, I installed a 500 watt Class D mono Rockford Fosgate amplifier with included bass control knob that I installed here in the center console. I also added a 2 farad capacitor I had laid around and a robust fuse block as well. I then leather wrapped the center console and armrest for more comfort, which I highly recommend. Then came the installation of an E46 M3 CSL Alcantara steering wheel. I find the Alcantara wheels are great for hot locations like where I live in Florida and add a nice grip even in direct sunlight. With the interior sorted, I moved on to the engine. When I purchased the car, it would only rev to 5,000 RPM due to a fuse for the trash control that had been removed and the ECU was in protect mode. I reinstalled the fuse and was able to get the factory set to 6,250 RPM rev line back. I then located a tuned ECU with 7,000 RPM rev limit and pops and bangs that sound off if you have the AC button pushed in. This works great since the previous owner had removed the AC unit to install these long tube headers. Now it's 2.5 liter M52 TU inline six screams all the way to 7,000 RPM and sounds great echoing off the local scenery through its straight pipe back to a vibrant muffler exhaust. I also removed the failure prone clutched engine fan and installed an electric unit with auto temperature switch. This frees up some additional horsepower and saves the radiator from any future fan blade exploding shrapnel. With this newfound horsepower, I decided to install E46 front big brake kit going from the stock 286 mm rotors to 320 mm rotors with much larger pads and calipers. Though it has some additional front brake bias, the foot pressure needed is much lighter and it brings the car up to a more modern feeling brake pedal with the added benefit of longer brake pad life than the OEM pads. Now with the power and brakes sorted, I moved to suspension and made a terrible mistake. I purchased cheap shocks and struts and have regretted it ever since. These new struts are so soft that they bottom out easier than the factory blown shots they had replaced. So there's definitely some Bill Stein Yellow Sport shocks coming in this E's future. As far as other maintenance, just the usual oil changes, spark plugs, and added this k and air filter and intake pipe from an old Peugeot that I retrofitted and it was only a $20 kit on eBay. More recently, I changed the Getrag manual transmission fluid, torsion limited slip differential oil, and then noticed the pending disaster that my output shaft on my transmission was loose. And the Jubo, also known as a flex disc, had been torn to shreds and was only transmitting power by binding the bolts and the flanges together. So I replaced the mangled output shaft seal, the Jubo, and also installed some new transmission mounts while I was in there. So what's next for this car? Well, now that it feels balanced, it is time to mess all that up and add a VF engineering supercharger at some point, and then it should make in the high 200s at the crank, and add some power pulleys maybe to reduce some parasitic loss as well. Prior to the supercharger though, I want to add a M54B30 intake as it has larger intake runners and should open up the top end a bit while losing a tiny bit of low end torque, sort of how the M50 manifolds are great for the M52 engines. Of course, some Bill Stein yellow shocks are first on the list and I would also like to find some better seats or just seat bottom leathers and further improve the interior. I hope you enjoyed this tour of my fun in the sun car and if you have any questions, let me know below. Happy driving and hope that you enjoy your ride as much as I do mine. Bye for now.